Welcome to Paradigms at Paradigms.life, the radio show and podcast that brings you inspired, inspiring people with visions of a viable future for life on Earth that includes humans. Hi, I'm the host of Paradigms, Baruch. Glad to be here with you. Thanks for listening. I think you're going to enjoy my guests very much. This is their second time on the show. They've been making music and living life, and they're going to tell us all about it including the amazing place they live. So let's meet my guests right now on this episode of Paradigms. Joan Zen, Jason Hicks, welcome back to Paradigms after eight years. And we still look amazing. And you still look amazing. <laughs> uh, yes, I look amazing. That's right. <laughs> oh, nice to be back. Great to great. Back. Really nice to talk with you both. You know, I, I have been seeing that you're playing music out and about a lot. And I just said, oh, it's time to get these folks back on the show and remind listeners of your wonderful music and message and how great you are. So thanks for coming. Well, how has the show been going? You'll have to give us a little bit of an update and tell us how things have been rolling for the last eight years. Well, it's on about a dozen stations now around the United States, downloaded as a podcast in 175 countries. We're up to episode like 580 something, I think, by now. Really have had an amazing run with fantastic guests offering such inspiration. And I mean, I'm inspired by doing the show. That's why I do it. I'm inspired. I feel like each guest comes on and teaches me stuff. Sometimes it's the same things I need to learn over and over again. So it's going really great. Oh, good. How about Joan Zen? What's happening with you all? How's the music? How's life? I know you moved. Talk to me. In a nutshell, the band is better than ever and busier than ever. I mean, there's really no other way to kind of preface it than that. Not that we've just always had great members in our band, always. And uh, this group particularly together is fantastic. Our crowds are just, our shows are packed every time. We're, we're in our 50s now and you know we think about boy this is kind of an exhausting lifestyle and <laughs> and uh, traveling around and still doing it indie style where you set up your own pa and things like that you know and but it's just we're just more popular than ever now and we sound better than ever and she still sounds as great as she ever did so it's just we're just gonna keep going i guess that's the state of things that's it we keep evaluating every year as we get older and you know the pa seems to get heavier it's so bizarre <laughs> car just keeps gaining weight <laughs> and so uh, we every time we think well we'll give it up uh, you know in a few years this or that we even talk about it we think well why we have the best band we've ever had they're committed they play together so well and there's just no drama in the band uh you know how many times can you say that in any group True. that you work with they're just uh happy to be together and uh they make great music together so we've been working on let's see the last five years we've had mostly the same players and then we've had the guitarist for at least a decade maybe more 12 13 mm -hmm. years mm -hmm. and so we've really got a good synergy going and we have about seven nine new songs that we've been sort of working on over the last five mm -hmm. years while building this house that jason's building from scratch timber frame home so it's really been a lot because we also were living off the grid sort of in an airstream trailer with no running water for these four years while we were doing this so it was sort of a bohemian you know uh in montana yeah. in montana yeah our property is at 5600 feet and so we just we decided to dry camp in an airstream for a while while we built the house and i gotta tell you that'll 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 tell you who you are <laughs> oh yeah you find out a lot about yourself when you when wow. you go up in a house and you, you live in a shell for six months you know <laughs> well and for those who don't know montana winters are no joke no they're no joke not yeah. up in the ball anyway yeah and fire season in montana is no joke yeah no, and, and you know we not to mention that our area of western montana is the highest densely populated uh, a grizzly population here there's over a thousand grizzlies in our recovery zone here so that black bears mountain lions and wolves they're just basically regular visitors you know and so learning to live with that of course having a good dog and everything but to you know it's 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 great it's one i i love nature i like to be as close to it as possible so good thing yeah, it's a good thing. Yeah, it's, so, so <laughs> insane, you know, so. it's really cool to be in the middle of nowhere in Montana with 3000 people in this town. And then just, just to be able to get to Missoula, a big thriving college city, 
uh, you know, our gigs every month at the Union Club, which is still like the old Union Hall, draws people from 21 to 81. And they're all rubbing elbows, dancing side by side on the dance floor, crowd surfing, <laughs> blowing bubbles, soap bubbles. I mean, it's just bizarrely joyful for these times. I would say that it, it's less cell phones and more people really connecting. And that's another reason I think we keep doing it. Yeah in the face of a changing climate, you know, a yeah, changing yeah. musical climate. So. Yeah. Wow. Well, that's awesome. I mean, I, I think you're right. I think connection's the whole point. At, the, at this time in the world, maybe more than ever before, maybe not, I don't know. But at this time in the world, the antidote to all the despair and the fear and the misdirected rage and all of it has got to be connection. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, and it's unfortunately our, our entire technological base these days globally is driving young people away from that. She has to listen to me talk about how damaging technology is all the time. There's great things, some great things about it. Medical procedures, robotic surgeries, you know, things like, you know, uh, advancements in this and that, and this and that. But there's just such a detriment to the sociological side. Yep. You know, it's just and just down from how you meet people in public now. There's all these walls and guard systems now. And again, we keep doing what we do because like when we go and play downtown or a festival or something, you you just literally just shatter those, you know, those newly erected social walls, you know, that are really actually invisible, but they're there, you know, and there's something about the band and the music, the older format that we do that people feel really comfortable with. That old school soul band where everybody plays and it's loud and it's tight. And uh, it's a lot of just unabashed passion, just raw passion. You young know? people particularly are just eating it up right now. They are. And they yeah. look so young. I mean, 21, 30, you know, they, they're just, they're kids. And what's amazing, though, we've been doing it in Montana 21 years now. And so we've gone through a whole round of people marrying people. Well, now they've had kids and now their kids are hiring us for their, for their uh, wedding. Love 21 it. year olds yeah. you know 25 year olds so it's that's really fun i'm talking with joan zen and jason hicks about their band joan zen and their wonderful music and their lives in montana we'll be back with more of this conversation after we hear some music they play wonderful original songs and they've been covering some great tunes so let's start out with a cover of one of my favorite stevie wonder songs you're gonna love this Joan Zen on Paradigms at paradigms.life.
intermission that I ever never Joan Zen and before that they were covering that great Stevie Wonder song Master Blaster Jammin here's the next part of my conversation with Joan Zen and Jason Hicks your music brings a really positive message that's real it's not Pollyanna it's very real your music basically says hey you can enjoy yourself. You can celebrate your existence and the existence of those around you. And all your songs basically say that in one way or another. So it's so positive. Yeah, and I, I think the new stuff is pretty much along the same lines. The, yeah. <laughs> the album title that I'm working with right now is just called, it's just open. Just open. Because it's a it's a noun, it's a verb, it's a directive, it's a, it's it says open minded open hearted mm-hmm. it's it it tells you to do something i don't know there's something about it that you know you have to open your mouth to sing you have to open your heart to feel and these times that's what we need is is a feeling of openness you know most buddhist practitioners would say that's the goal you know dropping we don't need to be spiritual gurus we need to be open to whatever is arising in the moment you know especially you know after pandemic and with all the violence, the random or seemingly random violence that we see in the United States these days, for people to come together and listen to and play great music and just have a good time is almost, I guess it is, it's a, it's a political act. It's a, revol- it's a revolutionary action. Yeah. In some ways, you can look at it as civil disobedience because you, do, you don't agree with the people that are in power and what they're all about and how they basically represent, you know, a, a singular thinking entity of humanity 
you know, the corporate mentality basically runs everything in the world now. And so, so there's, there's that aspect. It's like, wow, I'm an independent contractor, you know, as a musician, I'm still making it as that, you know, it's, it's an amazing amount of work. I have fans that, that connection with directly with people in front of me is, is so much more important than, than not having that. I, mean, it, 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 I, I would never want to be famous if, as long as I could just, uh, just reach out and just talk to people on my, my break for that I'm playing for. That's, that's just the artistic success for me, you know? And so there's a lot of combativeness that it goes on with it. Cause it's, it's an exhausting lifestyle. It's an expensive lifestyle. The gear is expensive. It's not very healthy. It's not you're it, out late. You're, you're out driving, late all the time. You're, you're going to hit deer. Yeah. You're going to hit animals. You, you end up eating a few too many restaurants and a few too many hamburgers, you know, and, and that, that starts to stack up and you keep doing it, you know, because it's so valuable. It's obviously valuable in today's world with the, with the, the way that people's minds are going with the negativity in the media, you know, I, I just, I just, it's like, it is like a fight. It's like fighting back a little bit, you know, but it's a spiritual mission ultimately, you know, um, but uh, I think you're right. It's revolutionary. Yeah. I, mean, I think anyone that has any talent whatsoever, whether it's just writing poetry or singing or dancing or uh, painting, I, I feel like it is a moral imperative yeah. to, continue to do it to force yourself to pay out of pocket to support yourself to do a radio show 500 times over a decade because you must do it <laughs> you it's know like, it's like being a farmer or something the way i look at me if you're a musician now and, and people are really ed edified by what you do you're, you're you're growing healthy vegetables you know and that's just, just nothing that feels better than feeding people no one tells you what to write. No one tells you what to sing, how to play it. There's no corporation saying, do this to get on the radio. This is organic soul, heart, creativity that just is coming out of all you guys and the band and, and everyone in the room dancing and listening. And this is humanity. All this, this technologized, mechanized, we aren't machines. We're not robots. Not yet. You know, when I was a kid, it all looked really cool, you know, space and AI and all that stuff. And now I'm like, yeah. you know what? Let's fix it here and let's fix it ourselves. And let's not turn our decision making over to algorithms in yeah. machines. That seems like a really bad idea. Totally. I mean, didn't anybody watch RoboCop? Didn't anybody see Terminator? Hello, Terminator. <laughs> Hello 1984. James Cameron knew all this yeah. stuff a long time ago. You know, as a guys off anyone? As a guys off. Really? Yeah. yeah. You know? Carl Sagan, anyone, you know. It's okay, you know, it's okay. It's just, uh, it, it boils down to economics like everything does. Now, chat, GBT, and AI and all that. It's, it's just a, it's a race for economic gain, you know, because it's just a tool, it's a benefit, you know, and, and everything is driven economically, even things like abortion issues or whatnot. And that's, ultimately, it has to be because that's the system we live in. And, and people you know, ask, ask us, oh, well, are you worried about, AI replacing musicians, or are you worried about, you know, there's always been new technology, right? When uh, rap music and different types of uh, processing and electronic gear and things, Pro Tools. Uh, the drum machine is the perfect example. Melodying, where you can pitch correct everything. I think Yeah, auto-tune. Auto-tune and think all that. I think there is going to be a natural backlash. I think even I see the Gen Zers, which I love, by the way, they're so open hearted and um optimistic and yet a little bit laid back i mean maybe it's a little fight flight freeze like you said because they what there's huge responsibility is in their laps now mm -hmm. but um they really seem like they're not they want they want old record players they want beepers and old flip phones really they're grabbing the old cameras the little cannons out of their parents desks i've been watching a few john oliver's on this kind of stuff and the kids are really into it so there's hope for them <laughs> oh yeah the the folkies I, I have friends in England that play trad music and they're huge right now. Everyone wants, you know, just a fiddler and a, and a guitar player at the pub. They don't, they're not looking for electronica at all. They just want old time music, just music. Yeah. Good songs. You know, it's funny because a lot of musicians want to disparage cover artists and I've played cover music for 40 years and I got to say a, a good song is a good song mm -hmm. and you cannot disparage anybody. Look at all the big stars that are redoing other people's songs. Why? Because the writing was so good. The melodies are so good. So I don't know. I think that's changing as well. People can really respect YouTube and people doing their own versions of people. Now people are like, Oh, that's great. 
it's it's changed right because 20 oh, yeah. years, people like oh if you were doing covers they oh cool cool you're doing covers you know you're not even a real artist love the ethos love the mission making great music bringing it to people bringing people together here's some more music jones and covering really a classic motown song you'll recognize it right away change 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 Chain of Fools, Joan Zen. Here's the next part of my conversation with Joan Zen and Jason Hicks. This is Paradigms at Paradigms.life. Well, you know who's getting a lot of attention now, and thank, I'm so glad because I've always loved her, is Laura Nero. Oh, yeah. Suddenly, and I think it's Gen Zers have discovered Laura Nero, who is one of the greatest, I mean, there would have been no Joni Mitchell or Kate Bush or Cindy Law. All you know, all that came from Laura Nero. They are embracing a lot more, uh, I think, organic music, too. And going back, yeah. like you say, to the 60s and 70s and finding all these amazing... I mean, there always would have been a Joni Mitchell. I have to take that back. But, yeah. <laughs> but you know, the, so the inspiration from the roots is is happening. That is really, really great. Now, you, you all, you live in Montana. I've lived in Montana. It's an absolutely beautiful place. It's a culturally, actually more diverse place than people might realize. There are some cultural extremes. 
um, I would say, in Montana. And, you know, I was certainly there involved with the people who are like feeding people, you know, the Seeds of Peace folks and and people who are doing that kind of stuff. But there's also been some really uh, racist and, and, and right wing stuff coming out of Montana. So there's a combination. How is it to be there? What do you encounter and how do you see people getting along? You know, I guess I'd have to s- just start kind of where you started with your comment about Jamaica. You know, it's a real mixed bag right now and probably maybe even more of a mixed bag than it was when you were here. So a huge influx of people here. The pandemic, you know, scared a lot of people, made a lot of people move, uh, a lot of move here, pay outrageous prices for property. And those prices haven't softened here. And there's not a lot of property for sale. So so there's a huge housing crisis here. You know, um, there's a lot of nimbyism. I'd have to say this is I, from what I can just experience myself and just from gauging what I read uh, on you know, in the news that uh, this is probably one of the nimbiest states in the country right now. I mean, this is just not in literally just no housing subdivisions, hotel expansions. The people that have come here and bought property and they just want to make sure they have theirs and nobody else gets it. And so I think a lot of that creates a lot of tension. The political thing is the political thing. That's that's TV. That's Fox News. You know, I have my Tibetan prayer flags out front here, you know, on, on my property everywhere. And it doesn't seem to cause too many problems. You know, I have fights with people. We play music here. We have friends that are on both sides of the aisle because the music seems to be kind of a common ground. They really value it. Right and left, everybody likes Fleetwood Mac. Yeah, basically, you know. <laughs> right. You know, that's where people come together is with music. And I I have been very lucky, I think, because of the Joan Zen name. People are very careful not to. I don't get hate comments on my Facebook posts. I don't experience any of that our neighbors are kind to us we're kind to them i don't know i definitely see what you're talking about in jamaica here we have nobody can afford a house so then there's nobody to work and so the coffee shops have the one barista that's working 60 hours a week because they can't find anybody and she's in her 50s or 60s you know know, it's like that so it's 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 tough it's really tough here and the houses are literally, it's as expensive as San Francisco to buy a home in Missoula. Just about now, yeah. Top top two places in the country as far as cost of living. That's nice. No one would have thought that. Even 10 years ago, I would not have th- thought that about Montana. So just in, since we started building our house, I mean, the average house price here four years ago was 230000 It's over 600000 now here, just in Swan Valley. Yeah, and Swan so, Valley is a depressed area because there's no sewer here. Yeah. So everybody's on septic tanks. It's Mayberry here. It's you Mayberry. Know. It's you know, we don't even get mail delivered to the houses. There's one little post office, you go pick up your mail. There's no trash pickup. You go to the dump, you know. So that's how small of a community it is. Well, towns like Missoula and Hamilton and Bozeman and Helena must be just like through the roof. They call it Bos Angeles now. They call they, it Bos Angeles. Bos Angeles. Now. Yeah. I think Rich it, Ranches and the Yellowstone TV show has really done that too. There, when we drive on this highway, there's what kind of cars? Oh Those yeah, last, cars. last summer I saw a guy in a red Lamborghini <laughs> up in the Swan Valley. Yeah, it was amazing. And they're driving on these potholed roads, yeah. you know, and you're just kind of laughing. <laughs> yeah, they they tore the highway up here and did mm. their asphalt around Salmon Lake, and and uh, we passed. We were on our way to a gig the other night. And, we passed a guy. Literally, was, this was a hundred twenty thousand dollar Porsche. If it was, uh, if it was a dollar, and it was on this just freshly cut up gravel road with bottles, and he was literally driving a half a mile an hour, yeah. like with this most scared look on his face. Yeah, there's Teslas everywhere. I mean, and I love crazy. Porsches, by the way. Porsches are fun cars. You yeah. Know? Oh yeah, absolutely, but not on a dirt road. Not on a dirt road. Not the most comfortable. But ride. I'd have to say, there's one interesting thing that goes on here in Montana that really seems to bridge the gap and it's part of that nimby culture though is that the people that move here really value the wilderness it doesn't matter if they're hunters or fishermen or guides they just love walking naked in the woods or whatever you know when it comes down to issues about the wilderness and the wildlife and things there seems to be a a lot more common ground when when it hits the poles you know good well good it could be that montana helps kind of you know instead of furthering a political divide here it could be that everyone you know okay you want to hunt grizzly bears but maybe we can allow that a little tiny bit and uh, but over here maybe you know we can get a little more socialist about some things you know and- i don't know i think we're pretty hopeful because we want to believe that people will fight for the last bit of of the last best place but i you know i don't know 
it, it seems grim, uh, degenerate times all around. But like Jason said, people do seem to rally around the environment here, right or yeah. left. They may go about it in a different way. There may be a different bond or a different, they want to log, these guys want to preserve, yeah. but they still are trying to get at it to, you know, preserve the wilderness. And they're both called conservation way. groups. You know, there's so many groups here are conservation groups, you know, and, and so, and, and they have their own idea about what that is. And some of it's just straight up for like, you know, for sportsmen and stuff like that. And some of it's really legit. And some of it really gets towards the center and they work together and river restoration, you know, particularly here from the highway 200, all the way up to Sealy Lake. Now they're just restoring massive amounts of pre-logged forest and river embankments. And they're, you know, this is a very, very uh, busy spot in the summer with, with tourists. Of course, the, the Blackfoot River is world famous, you know, and, and so you know, a lot of good things going on in Missoula um, and Missoula County. But then it's really tough, like because of uh, Bos Angeles and Gallatin County, which is the gateway going to Yellowstone, right? That Gallatin River has just been basically de declared a disaster because of algae bloom from all of the chemicals and the toilets and the septic tanks and everything going right into the river. Mainly so, from the golf course. And golf course. But, yeah. yeah. So we're really in a tough spot. If Montana goes, it's the last. I mean, this and a little bit of Alaska left is what we have, you know. You know, everything that we have in existence comes from either mining or agriculture. Everything from your toenail clippers to to the you know, everything in your car, either that comes out of the earth or you grow it in the earth, you know. And when you have conflict like it's going on in the world today, it's just it's incredibly. <laughs> It's just cliche now for human beings to just go dig up the ground and mine what they need to build whatever they need and justify yeah. conflict, you know, and it just appears that we're kind of going in that same way again, like, oh, well, we're going to fight with a few people now. So I guess we better drill the Alaskan after all, you know, and I guess we better build our semiconductors and our chips here in house now. And, you know, there's all these little signs going off that it's just all the same. And to me, you know, there's so many people on the planet now. The world is just way too small for business to be going like this, I'm afraid it's just more of the same. Dig it out of the earth, make the product, and then throw it back in a hole. Love talking with Joan Zen and Jason Hicks about the music, about what's going on in their community. Montana is such a beautiful place, and like everywhere, humans have their issues, and Montana is no exception. Here's another original by Joan Zen. It's called Reason. Give me a reason. 
positioning yourself on that elevated ground, exercising that newfound graciousness. I am blessed you cast your my best reason.
couple of Jones End songs, Don't Be Concerned and Reason. And now here is the final part of my conversation with Jones Zen and Jason Hicks. Luckily, it looks like between the natural cycles of the earth and human activity, we're on the cusp of reducing our numbers significantly. And if we take the long view the earth has before and will again repair itself. And hopefully the people that are left will form a different relationship with this whole notion of of extraction because Mm -hmm. it's based on the myth that we're separate from the earth, from the life of the earth and the cycles of the earth, which we're not. We are integral to it and they are integral to us. And there are more people learning that. I don't know. And I've quoted this a million times. Matthew Fox said to me, you know, hope is a verb with its sleeves rolled up. So I am hopeful that we are, as a species, going to learn what we need to learn. But obviously, we along we do it the hard way. We create massive suffering in order for us to learn these lessons. And just hoping we'll get it this time. Yeah. Yeah, me too. I agree. Like I said, uh, two steps forward, one step back or vi- vice versa. I mean, like I said, I was just talking about all the great things going on. The Salish Kootenai tribes here, they've been fighting for decades to get control of their water back, you know, here in Montana. And they finally have, right? And there's been a lot of support over decades. And that was a big win. And now they just set up this huge gravel plant right next to the Garden of a Thousand Buddhas, where I've worked for the last 15 years and helped build that center with our bare hands and our money and and our love and support and it's literally not even a half a mile from the buddha garden now this meditative center with all these buddha statues and you're going to just hear trucking and drilling and bombing and and it's unbelievable 157 acre rock crushing plant asphalt all that yeah, and that's that's on their land, on the Salish right Kootenai the tribal street. land, you know. So <laughs> you just and Jason's like, yeah, but what are you gonna do? They need gravel yeah. now. Everyone's moved to Montana, and the highways need to be fixed, and you need water, and you need so it's gonna go right next to the water too. It's right next to the river, and there's the you know, of course they've passed all of the EPA testing, saying it's not going to affect yeah, the yeah, yeah. water. Yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> they made off the right. Uh, I don't know the right. Uh, you know, city officials. So. That's what I'm saying. We I just don't know. I like you said. I think it's going to take absolute devastation until there is no functioning reason to extract because everything sort of stops. Yeah. <laughs> then uh, after that, we may regroup and have a whole new <laughs> age of Aquarius. You know, when the when the pandemic hit, we had that couple of weeks of stillness. You know, and the the waters cleaned themselves a bit and the air the skies cleared over Mumbai that's the one I always you know it it showed us what was possible and the thing about ongoing extraction is we actually have extracted everything we need if we would reuse what we have there's lots of copper out there that's been extracted we don't need any more bauxite mines we don't need you know to mine fossil fuels certainly that needs to stop you know it's all because as you said Jason, economic expediency. It's not necessary. So it's a, again, it comes back to what are our priorities as a people? And they they vary depend on belief system, which is kind of un- unfortunate. <laughs> That's a very good way to put it. It's kind of. <laughs> well, it's interesting though, when you sit down, like particularly a place like this small town and you've got people from the right and the left and their neighbors and they're sharing fences and they, their dogs, you know, interact on the streets and you run into the bars and, you have to hire this guy for 
this job to come and, and do the weed whacking here. And this guy needs a tractor and, and everybody's got to live next to each other. And when you really start talking to just regular people, everybody's got the same priority. Yeah. They want clean water, clean air. They want their kids to have school. They want their parents to be taken care of when they're old. They want to inherit a little bit of money from their parents when they die. They want to give that to their kids and they want their kids to have health care. I mean, really, when you talk to people, it's like pretty darn basic. And everybody, when you even go further than that with Buddhism, everybody just wants to be happy. And that's why this this dualism thing that we keep talking about, this othering, this extraction, this 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 whole myth that we're not all one is killing us. So I agree. Literally. Let's reduce some population a little bit, unfortunately, you know, and uh, that's what's going to happen as this uh, lot mass suffering happens. But like you said, I'm I'm pretty hopeful. And I think you have to be rolling up your sleeves. And that's why we're continuing to play music, even though. I'll probably die on stage. It'll be one of those epitaphs. She played that funky music till she died. <laughs> Boom. You know what? Like Miriam Makiba did. And what a great way to go. Yeah. I, I can't ask. I'd bet rather that than, you know, languish in some, you know, home, you know. So that's not happening for me. No. <laughs> but anyway, I do have some new music coming out. We have seven or nine songs that are in process. So when we get them done, I will send you a bunch of stuff so that you can play it on the shows and, and share it with your friends. That will be great. I can't wait. It's really nice to reconnect with you both. And, you know, I'm just happy that you're having a good life together. Yeah, we are. We are. Yeah, come visit us, you know, up at City Lake. Yeah. If you ever want to come up for a summer visit. Yeah, and us too. We'll, we'll maybe we'll pop down and see you. Come visit me. You are welcome. We have a spare room. That sounds so fun. Love talking with these people, Joan Zen and Jason Hicks. What a great band! Wonderful people living the life in Montana, building their house, playing their music, bringing people together. It doesn't get any better than that. If you'd like to know more about them, their website is joanzen.com. J-O-A-N-Z-E-N. Check them out. Their new record will be out hopefully this year, maybe next year. We'll definitely have them back to share that with us. They've got three records out right now, all very worth listening to. And the music videos they've been making are just great. Thank you, Joan Zen and Jason Hicks. If you enjoyed this episode of Paradigms, I hope you'll check out our website, paradigms.life, where you will find 14 years worth of episodes. Just type something in the little search area, and I bet we've got a show you'll be interested in. You can find Paradigms wherever you find your podcasts, as well as on over a dozen community radio stations around the United States. If you'd like to get Paradigms on your local station, just let me know. The message that Joan Zen brings, just, just sharing great music being in community, regardless of differences in identity, political, religious, or otherwise, just bringing people together. This is good. Community. All right, we're going to close out the show with one more song by Joan Zen. This one is called Sit There. And let's let the word for the week be meditation. Let's find a way to meditate, whether it's sitting, walking, singing, whatever it is. Find a way to spend some time just being with yourself and observing. Strengthen that observer self that allows us to watch our thoughts and feelings without being identified with them and see what that does for you. If you're interested in learning more about meditation, there are so many resources out there. I encourage you to check them out. All right, Baruch signing off for this episode of Paradigms. We'll see you next time with more inspired, inspiring people. Until then, let's meditate and be well. Oh, there's just so much to do in the one day. So many complications may be fitter in a way. All the obstacles the mountain on their removal line. But let's be to overcome them, I pray Don't just do anything
been listening to Paradigms at paradigms.life.